Video fighting took place here. What happened to the people who were living here? Uh, actually, civilian population uh, left Shushi before it was taken by Armenian forces, by Karabakhi forces. So only military personnel was here. No one, no civilian from Shushi suffered uh, because uh, Karabakhi army left a corridor for them. So they left to Lachin, from Lachin to Baku. The truth of what happened here is hotly disputed by both sides, but thousands of Azeris clearly fled in fear of their lives. The Karabakh authorities are quite happy with us showing this sort of devastation because it's the area from which the Azeris bombed Stepanakert during the war, but they're refusing to allow us to see villages that were Azeri before the conflict and were completely destroyed by the Armenian forces. The population was forced to leave or left of its own accord and they're very worried about the image it creates of the, of the conflict and the image it creates of Karabakh. Some international observers have said that the Karabakhian authorities have destroyed Azeri villages deliberately to prevent anybody returning, so there's no chance of people from Azerbaijan coming back. In the centre of the city stands an Azeri mosque, one of few reminders of the past. Oh, it's an empty shell. The authorities in Karabakh say they're protecting this mosque, preventing anybody from damaging it. It's quite miraculous that it's still standing given the level of the, the ferocity of the fighting and the hatred between both sides, but the fact remains this mosque is in a Christian Karabakh town and there's no Muslims left who can worship here. Both sides suffered during the war. This city is now home to Armenian refugees who left Azerbaijan during the fighting, along with their children. For kids who live around here, <laughs> this is their playground. We've been invited to a wedding, so we're just going to go to the carpet shop and try and find the bride and groom a present. David, what's this uh, picture of? This is a picture of Ganzasar, one of the most important spiritual centers in Gordon Karabakh. And it's very common to depict, you know, symbols of Karabakh on carpets. Some carpets serve as reminders of the war. What is that, sir? Rocket propelled grenade, I think. Yeah, again, it's a machine gun over here, tank here, anti aircraft guns here, another tank here. What does it say here? They say that uh, uh, you have to be powerful to have rights. You fight from a position of strength. Yeah. I've got my carpet. I'm going to give us a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before the wedding, we left the capital for a couple of days and headed out to the country. We've left Stepanica and driven north through Nagorno-Karabakh, heading towards an area where there's some demining going on, trying to get rid of some anti-personnel and landmines that have been left over from the conflict. The demining operation is run by the Halo Trust, a British-based charity which works around the world. I don't know how you operate in these. <laughs> you, you get work? used to it, you get used to it. How many hours will people have to work wearing this? They do, the D-miners do seven shifts of 45 minutes each, um, depending on the weather. Today's a great day, brilliant day for D-mining. It's not too hot, in the summer it gets very hot, but today's a great day for D-mining. I love the way you say that. <laughs> it's a lovely sunny day. Let's go to a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the pigs going in? <laughs> Pigs, cats or dogs, we've got no control on where they go. And a lot of the accidents have happened to animals. So what we do is we stop all demining. As soon as an animal goes into the area, we stop demining, move away from the area, try and get the animals out or wait till they've actually left the minefield. The farmers also follow their cattle yeah, and livestock into minefields? Yeah, they do. So you found a mine here? This, this one here in Russian says PMN2. PMN2 is a Russian anti-personnel mine. Nasty? 
very. So it's just been sitting here, or the mine that was here was just sitting here for 10 years, just waiting to find a victim. Yeah. Yeah. And as you can see, I mean, if you look to your left hand side, we've got a football pitch where the kids have been playing. And this is one of the areas where we had an accident, one of the human accidents occurred here. Is it safe for us to walk up to the line here? As far as the, the red sticks, yeah. You've cleared where we're standing where we're now. Standing, we've cleared. We have cleared. So this is this is a cleared area. Everything behind these red sticks is an uncleared area. We found one mine by the tree there already. You see the yellow stick. There's a man walking walking through the minefield. What are they doing? Just ask her to stop there. Can you stop there? Do you realize you're walking in a minefield? Yes, I understood. Why do you walk in the minefield? No, 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 no. Go back, go back. So she could detonate a mine now, possibly killing herself. Yeah. Doesn't this make your guys angry? Yeah, of course, yeah. We say the same thing every day, and, and it's the same response. I have to come here, I'm busy, I need to do my job. Do you know you're walking through a minefield? It's very dangerous where you are, that's why we're all wearing these jackets. Please, if you come, if you come over here, there could be mines here. Oh. Despite landmines and wars, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh say there's something special about this area which encourages a long life. They claim that if Nagorno-Karabakh was recognized as an independent country, it would have the highest rate of longevity in the world. Few outsiders have been able to check the claim because of the threat of conflict. But to illustrate the point, David suggested we stop at a graveyard. Yeah, look at these two. This couple, well, the first one, Lived from 1877 to 1975. 78. Is that 78? Yeah. So 101, and then 1880 to 1975. Yeah. So both of them were nearly 100. Look at the, there's a photo, a picture of them just there. David was saying that he found a grave here once, indicating that the, the person lived to a, to be 136 years old, so we're just trying to find it now. That's a, so that's 120, that person. This one, 1822 to 1937.